Hello everyone, it's time for another Overpowered in 2 Hours build where we try to create a build that is viable on very hard difficulty in just 2 hours of game time. Today I have a very strong melee build for you. By the end of this one I actually had to check the difficulty to make sure it was still on very hard because it started feeling like normal difficulty. The starting special stats look like this. Unlike our previous build, we don't need to spend much time in Sanctuary. Just be sure to grab the Grognak magazine and the special book from your house, and we'll put the special book into Endurance. I built a few shelves to hit level 2 and put a point in Blacksmith. Head to Red Rocket and grab Dog Meat, and then head off to Concord. Behind the door of the first house as you near Concord, there's a baseball bat. This will be our primary weapon for a bit. Discover Concord and fast travel back to Sanctuary. Modify the baseball bat with the chain wrapped mod. The great thing about using a baseball bat is it will continue to get stronger as we put more points into blacksmith and eventually science. Travel back to Concord and work your way to the Minutemen. When you hit level 3 put a point in blitz. This makes the build much more enjoyable as you're able to teleport to enemies with bats melee attacks within a certain range. Perception doesn't help this build at all but might as well grab the bobblehead while you're here. Head out and grab the power armor and the minigun. At this point, we'll actually take a break before taking on the death claw. Fast travel back to Sanctuary and repair the power armor. You may need to scrap a few things for materials. One of the keys to this build is maintaining power armor. So we'll need more fusion cores. Now head off to the robotics disposal ground. I grabbed the fat man and mini nuke, but I didn't end up needing them. There's a fusion core in the chest next to the sentry bot. Also inside the building, you can activate the sentry bot and then set it to self-destruct to get two more fusion cores. Head off to Satellite Station Olivia. Clear everything, grab the locket. There's another fusion core here as well. Also grab the key to the storage room, which has another mini nuke and a stealth magazine. Head to the mole rat den behind Red Rocket to get the black rimmed glasses and another fusion core. This is a good stockpile of fusion cores to keep us in power armor for quite some time. Head to Abernathy and return the locket to finish a quest for some more experience. At this point, I was level 5 and had added points to Big Leagues, which is our core damage skill, and Nuclear Physicist, which extends the duration of our fusion cores. From here, head back to Concord. It's now time to take on the Death Claw. My technique for this was to unload Vats attacks and then hide in the building while my action points refreshed. Remember that in power armor, your strength is automatically set to 11, so we'll be doing considerably more melee damage than we would outside of power armor. Clear the raiders, talk to Preston, and head back to Sanctuary. Repair your power armor and finish turning in the quest to Preston for some more experience. Grab the Mentats from the house with the cellar behind it. You can grab the gold bars from the cellar if you want, but we'll easily be able to afford what we need without them. I got lucky and got a pompadour wig here. Previously, I had also found these summer shorts, giving me a complete set of charisma gear. If you haven't yet, grab a couple of hub flowers around Sanctuary and then head back to Abernathy Farm. Just south is a shack with a whiskey inside. Grab that and then head off to Diamond City. On the way to Diamond City, you can grab another fusion core from the unmarked building just north of Arcjet. Work your way down to Oberlin Station. From here, I decided to test my build against the Yao Guai just outside of Vault 81. It was moderately successful. Get to Diamond City and craft Great Mentats at the Chemistry Station. Put on your Charisma gear, take the Great Mentats, and talk to Mo. Mo has one of my favorite melee weapons in the game, the Roxville Slugger, which you should be able to easily afford with just the ammo you've picked up so far. This reduces the AP cost of our attacks by 40%, essentially turning our slow weapon into a fast weapon. Another often overlooked element of VAT's efficiency is that when you're in VAT's, the damage you take is reduced by 90%, so the more time we spend in VAT's while fighting, the less damage we will take. Use the weapons workbench to swap your chain wrapped mod over to your new weapon, and use whatever you have left to buy fusion cores from Arturo and stim packs from Sun. At this point, we are only one hour into our build, and it's essentially done. But it will scale very well as we continue to level up, so let's do some quests to gain some more experience. Finish the Story of the Century quest with Piper and pick up Unlikely Valentine from Ellie Perkins and head off to rescue Nick. The trigger men should be no issue. Most of them go down in one hit. For leveling up, put a point in Medic, Action Boy, and Ninja. 
Even though we aren't a stealth character, it is possible to plan some sneak attacks to help us at the beginning of a fight. Rescue Nick, take care of Skinny Malone, and then turn in the quest with Valentine outside. At this point, I did the first step quest, which took me to Corvega. And this is where I actually had to double check that I was on very hard because this was far too easy in comparison to my other builds. There's another Grognak magazine boosting our critical hits further. Once this quest is complete, I decided to test myself against the final boss of my two hour build, Swan. It actually went pretty well. There's another Grognak magazine near Swan as well, and I finished with 10 minutes to spare, and I couldn't think of anything else to do, so I just ended it here. However, the great thing about this build is that it will continue to become stronger as you unlock more ranks of blacksmithing and science to upgrade your bat. You'll also progress to better power armor and more survivability, and once you get Blitz rank 2 at level 29, this build will become extremely smooth and satisfying to play. As you gain more levels, investing points into luck and picking up Grim Reaper Sprint along with the critical perks will be an absolute luxury taking this build over the top. To be honest, I was not optimistic going into this build, but it far exceeded my expectations. The Roxville Slugger is a tremendously overlooked weapon. I definitely recommend giving this build a try, especially if you're prone to always playing a sneak sniper character. Let me know how this works out for you. If you want to see the full guide, I've uploaded the two hour video as well. And remember to survive in the wasteland. You gotta be efficient.